let me let me just shut down so that I can uh... hi everybody and um, welcome to this uh, first session I just want to be sure that I'm being recorded huh? okay let me see yep the recording has started the broadcast has started good so now I'll how do I how do I see this thing? Hang on. Okay, can you see my screen? I'm trying to share the screen and that is now a problem. Webcam audio no. Share the screen. Good. So uh, you can probably see my screen now. Can you see my screen? Please confirm so that I can get started with this. Okay, uh, let us start with the Guru Mantra. If you can see my screen. Om Gurave Nama. 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 So, uh, basically, you will observe that there's a beautiful uh, topic today. We are talking of Agni and particularly the form of Agni called Dakshin Agni, which is the one responsible for creating us. Our soul has come down through light and light is called Agni in Jyotish, not just heat, not just fire. See, when you say fire, there's heat and there's light. So two things definitely are known to man. The two things known are there is heat and there is light. And from that light, we have a form. Because of light, we can see forms, we can see things. And from that ability to see things is connected the ability to knowledge. So the third thing, which normally we don't attribute to Agni, is knowledge. And that is what is hidden part of Agni. And uh, in this uh, PJC of America, we will be going through the various parts of the Panchang. And step by step, we will be going through everything in some detail. So first thing is fire or energy is the Lord of Bhuloka. He is symbolized by Mars. Mars is the controlling planet for Agni Tattva not the source see there are two things when we say karaka we are talking about one who is controlling from the the word karaka is from the sanskrit word kara which means hand he is the hand of god but he is not god so mars is the karaka or the controller or the hand of god as far as Agni Tattva is concerned. But then who is going to be the source? Because the source is representing God. The source for Agni Tattva is the sun. As far as we are concerned, we know all light and heat is coming from the sun. There is no life on earth possible without the sun. So therefore the sun must be the representative of God. So these two factors are very clear as far as Agni is concerned. Now, as far as Mars, the controller is concerned, he is sitting in Agni and is controlling the fire, controlling the light. That is his Mula Trikona. That is his office. He functions from there. He doesn't sleep over there. He functions from there. He sleeps in Ver, uh, Scorpio, which is his Swashetra. He favors Manushya to Lord Earth on his behalf. We, we, we must realize that we are able to Lord over Earth 
because we have the maximum benefit of agni no other creature on this planet has as much uh, access to agni as manushya or the human beings do the arrangement or disposition of the three sacred fires now you see the three sacred fires called dakshin agni is normally in aries then we have garhapatya agni which is in leo and we have avahani agni which is in sagittarius but in your horoscope in your chart this dakshina agni is in your first house garhapatya is in your fifth house and the avahaniya is in your ninth house so this three form the famous triangle of agni you see that triangle put that in your mind for that triangle is pointed upwards and is the tendency of fire to always burn upwards so the agni triangle has the three corner three heads each corner each each pointed part of the triangle is called a head so there are three heads of agni and agni is always represented as having three heads and three legs so this is one leg which goes from aries to leo the other leg is from leo to sagittarius and the third leg is from sagittarius to aries so any movement along this is called the jump of the lion it is called simha avalokana so if you are traveling from aries to leo it is called the jump of the lion simha avalokana he is the swa the self how do you know yourself you stand in front of the mirror of course there should be light in the room because of the light you can see yourself in the mirror and and the first cognition of yourself your body your face your features is your external features so so the self is first identified as the lagna and then you have a name your name is also swa your identity so swa simply means your identity yourself and we have multiple things to identify us from each other to identify our abilities all that is swa the self and dakshina agni is the one that is manifesting and this dakshina agni actually manifests through the weekday lord in which we are born so we are now going to see how this dakshina agni which is in the first house is going to manifest through the lagna through the varesh the weekday lord now agni as a devata is said to have two shaktis because you will observe in this diagram next to us there is a time roughly from 6 am the sun is rising and 8 am 10 am it's all sunlight till sunset at 6 pm and then there is the night so the we have a day half the sun is ruling the day half and when the sun is shining none of the stars are visible nothing is visible out here and in the night it is the moon that is ruling the half and over here you can see the stars the nakshatra mandala the other planets they are touring over there somebody is going to some nakshatra somebody is coming from some nakshatra you can see all that in the night sky but in the day there's absolutely nothing there's just one surya so we say in the day time agni is swa the agni that i'm talking about right now is swa or self okay he is with ha ha so when you say ha you breathe out it is like given away to abnegate sacrificed so you are giving away something you are giving away the agni you are sacrificing your agni and you are doing that for the welfare of the world and that is what the sun god is surya is doing right he is constantly giving away his energy in the daytime you can see the sun he is giving away his energy completely so think about the daytime this agni is with ha because swa is with ha 
Swa is the self. Surya is the self. He is with Ha. It becomes Swaha. So did you see the derivation of the first mantra of Agni? The first mantra of Agni is Swaha. And this sound Swaha, it means I am sacrificing some energy for the greater good, for doing something good, for doing some karma. Just like Surya, I am going to go ahead and do some work. Right now, I am doing Swaha because I am the one who's talking. I am the one who's sacrificing the energy. Okay? And this whole half is Aho. Daytime. Aho. See from Ha, Aho. It's an exclamation. Aho. So you have sacrificed. So when the day is over, we say, Aho, he has sacrificed. Sacrificed his energy, like Surya. And that's Dakshina Agni. He is called Dakshina Agni because in the daytime, during the daytime, whether it is morning 6 o'clock, 7, 10, midday, afternoon, the whole focus was on midday. The whole focus was on midday. The whole concept of time in our head is about a.m. and p.m. Anti-meridian, post-meridian. This a.m. and p.m. has is really got into the head of human beings and all other creatures. They become aware that, oh, it's morning time. I have energy. I have time to do things. But the moment it's p.m., you realize not much time is left. The day is going to finish very soon. So the whole focus was on the 10th house, which is the midday sun. So midday sun symbolizes the meridian, the sky, the sun in the 10th house, the sun right on top of our heads in the sky. That's called the 10th house. And that is called Dakshina because the 10th house is called Dakshina, the south. Agni is in the south because Agni is our focus. Agni is the focus of not just our eyes. It is the focus of our mind. It is the focus of our entire consciousness. Our whole being gets focused because of Agni. I want you to appreciate the importance of this Agni. That if you are in the daytime, it's in the south, Dakshin Agni. But what about the night? In the night, it is different. Dha, the whole focus is about conserving because the sun has gone to sleep. The sun is no longer visible in the sky at night. The sun has gone under the horizon. We say he is gone to conserve his energy. He is gone to rest. He is saving energy. He is gone to set himself up again reset himself reboot himself to bestow new energies to himself to fix whatever losses he's made or whatever errors that were made to restore himself so so the night is all about restoration so in the day the energy is going out in the night the energy is coming back it is restoring but the, in the night, let us say the sun has set at 6 p.m. So whether it is 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m., midnight, 2 a.m., there is only one focus. What time is the sun going to rise? See, the focus in the daytime was the midday sun, whereas the focus in the nighttime is the sunrise. And the sunrise is nothing but sewer. And to swa, I add dha, the restoration power to swa. So swa is getting restored. Swa or the self is getting restored. Swa dha. So that is the shakti of agni at night. In the daytime, the shakti is swaha. In the nighttime, the shakti is swa dha. So that is the second mantra. These two shaktis. Are, are very beautiful shaktis. They say, Swaha, 
is like Gauri, the wife of Shiva, whereas Swadha is like Lakshmi, the wife of Vishnu. So, so these are the wives. So if Swaha is like Gauri, the wife, and we say the energies of husband and wife must be opposite. Now that is basic Jyotish. Most of you know basic Jyotish, that the husband and wife have to be opposite polarities. So if Gauri is daytime, Swaha, Shiva must be nighttime. Shiva must be associated with the night, with the moon, with, and so, if Swadha or Lakshmi is associated with the night energy, then Vishnu must be associated with the day energy. So I have beautifully derived for you the very foundation of Hinduism, of Vedic learning, the principal deities. And the principal deities, the twofold, are coming from these two streams of day and night so the day is vishnu and gauri because of swaha the night is shiva and lakshmi because of swadha so lakshmi is like a sister of shiva and gauri parvati is like a sister of vishnu did you understand that very interesting so when parvati or gauri was getting married vishnu was acting as the brother-in-law of Shiva. So he was receiving Shiva and he was doing all the rites necessary. When Lakshmi is ever in trouble, she goes rushing to Shiva to help her. So you see the connection of Shri, that is Lakshmi, with Shiva and Hri, that is Gauri, with Vishnu. So the two principal sounds, the beejas, the two principal beejas also came from here. Vishnu side is the swaha is like Gauri. So Hreem. This swadha is like Lakshmi. So Shreem. So Hreem and Shreem. Hreem in the day, Shreem at night. Hreem in the day, Shreem at night. Did you get it? Two sounds, two beejas, and all this came out from Swa, the self. And even the breath is called Swasa. It is from Swa that the word for the breath, Swasa, to take the breath. The night is called Ratra. Now I broke this word into two parts. Ra, Ra is Agni. We know Ra is Agni. Ra in, in mystical Jyotish. In Kundalini Shastra, Ram is Agni Bija. Ra is the manifested Agni. A is manifestation because of Vasudeva. So Agni, that is Ram, is added to A, Vasudeva. So Agni is manifested. And Tra, the sound Tra is to protect. Like Mantra, like you have the sound Mantra. What is the meaning of the sound Mantra? Mantra is from Mana, that is mind, Tra, to protect. So protection of the mind. Okay, it's a simple breakup of the sound. There is, of course, a whole shloka to that about manastrayate, but I am not going into that. I just want to do a simple, straight breakup. Ra is Agni, Tra is protect. So in Ratra means protect the Agni, protect the energy, go to sleep, restore yourself. That is what Ratra energy is about. And from here, we took the last part of Aho. Aho. So Ho is over here. A uh, starts over here at 6 a.m. and Ho finishes at 6 p.m. So we took Ho. And from Ratra, we, Ra starts at 6 p.m. Tra finishes at 6 a.m. So we took Ho over here at 6 p.m. and Ra around 6 p.m. to get 
hora shastra so what is hora shastra what is hora shastra it is the science of agni it is the science of energy and and it is not just science as a physical science it is a metaphysical science it is of agni and agni is not just light so i cannot just call it science of light it is also science of heat and there is something more to agni that i talked about sound so it is the science of sound also that is the soul that is transported by agni my soul has come from shiva or from omkara through the light process because my soul all the books say that that the soul or the atman is a spark of light so there is a, it is also the science of the soul so therefore hora shastra is the science of agni it uh, the word agni covers everything i hope you appreciated this two fold division and you are very clear that gauri is on shukla paksha with vishnu and lakshmi is in krishna paksha with swadha with shiva or rudra paksha to be more precise technically more right now we are going to study the relationship between agni and vayu okay wherever agni is the wind blows from the opposite direction if it's a simple physics simple physics wherever you create heat the air on top of that gets heated and starts rising and from the colder regions around the air has to come rushing so if the heat is in aries at 6 am the coldest region is opposite so therefore all the wind must rush from here to here so basically in the day time there is more agni you can see it is heating and heating and heating and heating and heating until maximum heat point is around 1 pm to 2 pm now if i were to time the heat around the natural zodiac and say that the sun is rising at 6 am in aries every day then the maximum heat will be in leo and who can stay over there other than the sun himself this in the zodiac the hottest burning region is leo so therefore only the sun can have that as his home because naturally the sun will live in a place which is hot not in a place which is cold since leo is the hottest region in the zodiac opposite that aquarius must be the coldest region so that is why aquarius is associated with the tall cold mountains ice clad mountains of the himalayas and other regions now we have derived that the sun must live in leo this must be his home he has to make his palace over here and because he is the sun he will work from his palace he decides he is the boss the day time has more agni and people go to work because of that see they are giving they are sacrificing energy right they are burning their energy right and energy is wealth energy is wealth don't forget this equation and all energy is converted to wealth so if energy is being sacrificed by the sun all of us in the day time are going out to work we are working in the day time we are working when there is light and that is how wealth is created in the world because of the sun so if for some reason the total solar activity starts dying then we know that the planet earth has started dying that at least we are going to lose wealth that financially we will be going down 
those of you who have been following sunspots please make a google search and see what is happening in the world from 2019 the total solar activity is going down very very drastically from last year so it is but natural that the wealth of the world will go down so keep a, it's very obvious there is a connection between the sun the heating breathing out aha what we call ha and giving the energy so therefore the sun is the giver of all wealth of every kind to every creature what you value only the sun can give it to you nobody else can none of the grahas have any capacity whatsoever to give you anything they only do when the sun approves it the boss has to approve if he doesn't approve none of the grahas can actually give anything to you it is very interesting that in this time the guru is brihaspati jupiter is the guru we will come to the derivation of this later but remember that in the daytime in the daytime the sun the guru is brihaspati and the stars are not visible so the rashi are said to be adrishya so from the first house as an analogy as an analogy from the first house to the sixth house we say is like daytime from the seventh house to the that's the sunset to the twelfth house is like night time so in the daytime it's heating in the night time it's cooling the fifth house has maximum heat maximum burning and the sun lives over there the stars are not visible so this is a drishya an in, invisible half the stars are visible so it is drishya so the word drishya or adrishya is based upon visibility of the stars visibility of the sky whether the sky is visible or not the real i mean the sky beyond because all that we see in the daytime is the reflected light from the water vapors showing us a blue sky the sky is actually not blue those are water vapors that are reflecting the blue light so the uh, in the night time there is more vayu there is more wind so if there is fire over here there was wind over here fire is heating the wind is cooling have you seen when you burn your fingers you try to start blowing on that to cool it the wind is rushing to cool things down the wind is cooling the once the wind blows the place cools down it carries the heat away the wind carries the heat away so the moon shines and the vayu cools the moon is shining and the vayu is cooling so the more the moon will shine the more the vayu will cool down so vayu and the moon get interlinked agni and the sun get interlinked i want you to remember the linkages the sun is associated with agni heating fire and cooling is because of vayu the wind the cooling is happening because of the wind it is not some kind of a air conditioner out there in the sky the wind is blowing and that's how things are cooling down and that cooling is happening and that, that's connected to the moon and the stars at that point of time what is there in the mind love home is in the mind now see in the daytime wealth and work is in the mind in the night time love and home is in the mind so the guru becomes shukra the guru is shukra he is telling come home whereas here the guru is brihaspati generate wealth have more income go to work don't sleep see the difference 
the Guru Brihaspati is very work focused. His, his very, it's very important that you must generate enough wealth for everybody. There should be food and everything that is required available. That is Brihaspati's objective. Whereas Shukra's objective is there should be a lot of love and affection. People should live together. They should come home. So, so the mind, the conscious, the consciousness of the night is about home, of the day is about work. Therefore, therefore, in a zodiac, every graha must have a home and an office. This home is called Shua Shetra. Swa. We started with Swa. The whole word was Swa. Shetra means home. Whereas here it is Mula Trikona. Actually, the exact word is Kona. It is Kona because it is coming from the first shrine that was created by the maximum heat of the sun. The word Kona was picked up from the sun. He was the one whose palace has to be made first. Unless his palace is made, nobody else can have a home. So, Kona. From Kona, it became Trikona because there are three of them. And then, and then work. So, any planet's Mula Trikona is where he's working from. Where Swashetra is his home, where he's relaxing. Mula Trikona, solar energy. Swakshetra, lunar energy. Mula Trikona, Guru is Jupiter. Swakshetra, Guru is Shukra. These fundamental fundamentals of Hora Shastra are derived from Agni. And the two most important turning point, these are turning points of energy, turning points of time, sunrise. Agni is exalting. Ah, now it's my time has come. And Vayu, oh, my time is over. I can't cool anymore. See, Vayu is constantly trying to cool. After the sun rises, why you cannot cool anymore? The, the heat is increasing. So, so who is exalting? Who is becoming strong? Agni is becoming strong from sunrise. Vayu is going down from sunrise. At sunset, Vayu is exalting. My time has come. I am now going to show how I will cool the planet. I will chill it. Agni is struggling. He can't. The sun has gone to restore himself. He says, hang on, I'm getting charged. My battery is down. You see, that's the difference. And that happens every day, day and night. And that happens with human beings, with all creatures. In this manner, Agni is actually lauding Bhuloka by heating and cooling, heating and cooling. And this goes on and on and on. And if I were to say the sun is the hottest planet right if i look at the planets that we use in jyotish from the sun to saturn we use planets from sun to saturn these are the seven right sun then we have mercury we have venus earth actually earth is replaced by the sun because we are using a geocentric model we have the moon as a satellite of the earth we are concerned with the moon we are not concerned with the satellites of the other planets then there is mars jupiter and saturn so that's seven of them among the seven who is the hottest the sun is the hottest so therefore the sun will make his home in leo and he says i will also work from here why why are you going to work from there because that is the hottest region to balance him to balance him the coldest planet who is the coldest planet the coldest planet is saturn saturn has to work from the opposite sign from aquarius so therefore saturn has to make his office his mula trikona in aquarius did you see the derivation of the mula trikona of the sun and saturn based upon agni and vayu so therefore saturn must rule vayu tattva also because he is the coldest one he is the coolest one he understands he controls he must symbolize ah so 
that's how the Mula Trikonas were derived. So what is sunrise? Sunrise is like an exaltation of the Surya. And what is sunset? It is debility of Surya. What is sunset? Exaltation of Saturn. He feels, wow, my time has come. And what is sunrise? From now, I am entering defeat. I'm just going to struggle and struggle and struggle, and I can't cool the planet anymore. You see, so exaltations and debilitations are turning points. And these turning points give us the opportunity to turn our own life around. You have a certain kind of lifestyle. You want to turn it around. The best option that you have is to link your spiritual practices with the sunrise and the sunset. Because these are the turning points. When, because then you are using the natural energy of the whole system. By using this natural energy, you are using the turning points and you can turn your life around. So what you do at sunrise and sunset becomes a controller for the day and the night. What you do at sunrise controls the day. What you do at sunset controls the night. And the Shiva Mahapuran tells a very fantastic thing. If you worship at sunrise, exactly at sunrise, you will have a lot of money. You will be an extremely wealthy person. If you worship exactly at sunset, you will have 100 years of longevity like Brahma. Because, because here, why you will support you? You are able to catch the why you at his exaltation point. Here you are able to catch the Agni at the exaltation point. All you got to do is to catch it at sunrise and sunset. Ah, what a secret. Now we understand why they say that these are called the Sandhya. That is why the Sandhya is so important. It is so critical that you must wake up before sunrise and get ready for catching the Sandhya. You will have your wealth. Whatever wealth you want, whatever you want, what is wealth? Wealth is what you value. If I don't value a Rolex, you give me a Rolex, I am going to try to chew it like a chocolate. It won't work. I'll throw it away. The point is, if I value a chocolate, then the sun god will give me a chocolate. If I value knowledge, he will give me knowledge. Wealth is what you value. And here, you get longevity, long life, beautiful long breath, very cool, very healthy. Your diseases start going away. If you Pray at sunset. Do you know what I tell cancer patients? No, your morning walk is not important. Go for a walk at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., go out of the house. Go for a walk. And as you walk, keep doing your Mrutunjaya Mantra. Keep doing the Mrutunjaya Mantra as you walk. So what happens is they are going out. They are walking. They are, they are with the plants. They are breathing. That breath, they are they're enjoying the Vayu. When you walk, it is Vayu. Walking is Vayu activation. We are walking because of Vayu. Every movement is happening because of Vayu. When you sit at a place, Agni is activated. Look at the sun. His home and palace are in the same place. He doesn't like to walk. He just sits in his house and gives orders. Whereas Vayu rushes from here to there. He's the wind. So go for a walk and do the Mrityanjaya Mantra to cancer patients. That's how I fight cancer. Because I know I have to catch the exaltation of Saturn. If I do that, they'll get longevity. It is very important. So the sun rises, exalts. It rises. Exaltation is rising. That's why I always put an arrow up. You observe the sun with the arrow up. I always put that there to remind myself. It is rising now.
animals in the tattva many of you know this that look god created plants and animals okay all the atman the jeev, the living the living kingdom the life on planet earth is distributed as plants and animals the plants are generally said to be fixed and the animals are said to be mobile they can move around birds can fly cows can walk fishes can swim and man can do all that so basically this box zodiac gives a better idea of directions you see bhuloka if you read about bhuloka bhuloka maps onto your muladhara chakra and there that muladhara has got four petals and these four petals are perfectly aligned to the cardinal directions so you are thinking that the gps in your in your system you know your system has a built in gps this built in gps you thought was on top of your head no it's at the bottom of your spine you see your gps is at the bottom of your spine all creatures have this gps this tells us the cardinal directions okay now the east is where the agni is and east in this is actually aries and taurus these two are in the east aries and taurus are in the east so life when it comes to bhuloka if it travels to the east then it is in aries or in taurus if the life goes over here it's in uh cancer to the north it's in cancer or in leo in the west it is in libra or in scorpio and in the south in capricorn or aquarius okay now the tattvas you see agni is in the east jala is in the north in the sky okay i don't know why it is in the sky is the sky blue in color because of water vapor interesting okay and uh, we have the wind in the west that is indisputed because it has to balance the agni and then the only thing left is prithvi so we put it on the remaining direction which is south then we put all the animals all the terrestrial animals came on prithvi so basically capricorn and aquarius are showing all terrestrial but the animals are movable mobile so they can't go to aquarius they must be connected to capricorn very interesting there is a capricorn connection to all animals who are terrestrial there is a cancer connection to all fishes aquatic creatures there is a libra connection to all birds and human beings are different from all three of them we have agni we have prithvi we have jala we have vayu all right but our dominant our dominance is of agni we have very powerful brain and that is our processing power our brain our agni is supreme so with the maximum of agni god created human beings okay so keep that in mind that human beings for us agni is very very important for fishes jala is important for birds the wind is important and for this terrestrial creatures the earth is very important the plant kingdom is fixed it is sthira so because plants don't walk around right they are fixed they are fixed and these plants are all over so i am not going into what type of plants were but you observe that these are the four cardinal directions and the living creatures can only come into the cardinal directions not the dual signs the dual signs are left out over here they are called the konas so basically these are the kendra and these are the konas of the muladhara of the muladhara protection for all creatures is coming from the ninth house 
So man is protected by the bow, by Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is the protection of man and Aries is controlling the development of man. Man as a creature has come a long way from the Stone Age to the computer age today. And all this rapid development we are having is all because of Aries. You just have to look at Aries, see what planets are coming, what planets are going, what planets are transiting, and you will know what is happening in the world of men. You have to look at Sagittarius, see what planets are coming, what planets are going, and to check whether the heavens are protecting mankind or not. So we have protection from nature when Sagittarius is well occupied, well placed. We have, we are growing, we are living well if Aries is well. For example, when did World War II start? World War II started when Saturn and Ketu were transiting over Aries. Now, when Saturn and Ketu transit together, these two planets don't get along at all. So a battle is going to start and man is going to kill man. And that's what happened. Now, sometime back last year, Saturn and Ketu were transiting over Sagittarius. So what will happen? The protection of man will go. Our protection is gone. Nature is no longer willing to protect us. So, so something got triggered and our protection is gone. We are all hiding inside our houses and waiting for better days to come when nature will afford protection to us. So you see, it is very important to understand the na nature. Unless we understand nature, how are you going to study transits? Okay. With this, I'd like to take a, a few minutes break. And uh, let's take a five minute break. Please. So, uh, Agni is three headed. Okay. We talked about the three heads. They are the first fifth and the ninth houses of the natural zodiac and in your horoscope lagna panchama and navama that's where the agni is lagna or the first house is said to be bhuloka natural aries bhuloka the name of the agni over there is pavamana or terrestrial why it's on earth terrestrial is on earth and that's called dakshin agni because we have seen that that Agni is actually in the midday sun. The consciousness is in the midday. So we call it Takshin Agni. But the energy over here is of the mother, Matri. Mother. So it is called Pavamana Agni or the terrestrial Agni. The other Agni in the fifth house is called Suchi. And it is in Arka. Arka is another name for the sun. Suchi is in Arka. And this arc, the fifth house sun is normally called Arka. And uh, that is the celestial sun, Garhapatya Agni. It's with the Pitri. And Pavamana, atmospheric lightning, that is Ahavani Agni, that is with the Guru. So, so you observe, first house, the Agni is focused on mother. In the fifth house, he's focused on the father. And in the ninth house, he's focused on the guru. We say in the first house, the Agni is focused on mother. And the symbol of the mother is the moon. In the fifth house, he's focused on Pitri, fathers, forefathers. That is the sun. And in the Swargaloka, he's with the guru. He's called Avani Agni. And he is with the stars. So this same Agni or light, light, heat is with the moon at sunrise because all the time he was with mama. He was with the moon. At the moment of sunrise only he assumes that he has gone off to the sun. But the moon has not fully left him. The cooling has not fully left him. It's only in the fifth house that it is maximum heat. This is the Suchi. These were represented by three forms. Dakshin Agni, Garhapatya Agni in the fifth house and Ahavani Agni in the ninth house. 
Now, this is Manusmriti, Pitri, father or progenitor is Garhapatya Agni, Matri, mother Dakshin Agni, and Guru is Ahavani Agni. This triad of fires is most venerable. So, the Lagna should be treated as a blessing of the mother. The fifth knowledge is the blessing or wealth, shall I say son, more wealth is a blessing of the father. And ninth knowledge is the blessing of the guru. These are the three blessings of Agni. That's why they are venerable. That's why they must be respected and prayed to. You have good health because of Dakshina Agni. You have good wealth because of Garhapatya Agni. And you have good knowledge because of Avani Agni, because of the Guru. He who neglects not these three, that means you should not neglect these three. He who does not neglect three of them will conquer the three worlds. Bhu Loka, Bhuva Loka and Swarga Loka you will conquer. All these three Lokas you will conquer. You will actually be a successful person. Your life will be meaningful. But for that, the whole focus must be very clear. I have to conquer the three Agnis because I have been given a human body. You are not a bird. You are not a cow. You are not an alligator. You are not a fish. Your focus is not on the other tattvas. Your focus is absolutely on Agni tattva. Because you are a human being. One, five and nine are your topmost priorities. And from one, you will get health by the grace of the mother. You will, she is very concerned about your health. It's the father who is more concerned about what you are doing. What's my son going to do? Is he studying something or is going to be a loafer? Is the father. It's the pitris. They want you to have wealth. If your father is wealthy, you will be wealthy. He will give you a portion of the wealth. Hopefully. And same way with the guru. The guru gives knowledge. He gives the spiritual path. He teaches you how you have to walk that path. With what values, with what strength you have to walk that path. Without the guru, you cannot walk this spiritual path. The Ahavanya path is the door does not open without a guru. So we are very clear. Without a mother, there is no health. Without the father, there is no wealth. And without guru, there is no knowledge. There is no spirituality. And radiant in body like a god, he will enjoy bliss in heaven. Because you will conquer. You will conquer Bhu. You will cross Bhu. Then you will cross Bhuva. And then you will go to Swarga. And who knows, you will cross this. If you are strong enough, you will cross this and go to higher levels. But that can only happen with Agni. Going up is only possible with Agni. Because Agni is only Tattva which goes up. None of the other Tattvas go up. Three-headed Agni. For this world, the Garhapatya fire is piled up. Now, now this, this world, that means this world where we are, this sansara, where you and I are living and we are doing jobs and we are doing something and getting some money so that we can live our lives. This whole Garhapatya fire is centered around the fifth, around Leo, natural Leo, the palace of the king, the home of the king, the sun, the whole world, sansara, is focused on him. All the wealth, this, this Agni, when this Agni will really jump and burn very, 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 very high, when this heats up the body, then this world you will enjoy like anything. You will get a lot of wealth. You will have a lot of status. See fifth house, power, position, authority. From where does it come? It comes from the fifth house. Status, fifth house. How can you have wealth if you have no status? Wealth is comes with status. 
or one comes first or the other comes later it's all together that's garapatya agni ga so three sounds are that the remember the three sounds the ga a the for dakshinagini first house ga for fifth house garhapatya and ninth house a avahaniya so garhapatya fire begets riches in this world surya gives wealth in bhuloka panafara you see a lot of wealth will come in this world you will be wealthy avahaniya agni is different he begets riches in the yonder world in the other world that wealth which brihaspati who is the natural lord of the ninth house sagittarius he gives wealth in swargaloka apocalypse it is after life that you will actually enjoy that even even a dollar of that money you cannot enjoy in this life that is why very 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 spiritual people die like beggars why do they die like beggars because in reality they have ignored the garhapatya completely and shifted the entire focus to avaniya when you shift the whole focus to avaniya this all the energy all the agni you have x amount of agni x amount of energy if you put all the energy in the ninth house then you are going to get riches after death that is what manuspriti clearly spells out but for this world you want to have a lot of reserves for this world then focus on the fifth house with reverence reverence prayers pujas mantra fifth house is mantra to garhapatya he rests on this world that means in this world in bhuloka you will rest that means you will die and you will come back again you will die and you will come back again you will die and you will come back again you will rest in this world and makes amends to life here you every time you come back you make the life better you make it even better and better and better and better until maybe one day what become the president prime minister or god knows the richest guy in the world you will keep resting on garapatya the fifth house so this is the earth wealth whereas with reverence to ahavaniya the life path is reversed from swa if you see i am here my my head my brain is in the my brain my intelligence is in the that is the upadesha that is the so if i go to ahavaniya directly i am going in a reverse fashion i am going from 1 to 9 i am going retrograde whereas if i am going from dar to ga i am going direct i am going zodiacal i am traveling forward you see life path is direct from swa to garapatya fifth house family children sansara here the life path is reversed from swa avaniya na dharma ashrama sanyasa so this fifth house when the fifth house agni is stronger i go to sansara when the ninth house agni is very very strong i will go to sanyasa but depends how i am going there okay so now we come to the next chapter the weekday lord placement agni is sapta jiva he has seven tongue these are the seven colors of the seven days so it is called vara vara as far as we are concerned in bhuloka agni is in the vara okay we did some philosophy related to agni now we are going to study some jyotish at a uh, more uh, rudimentary level and maybe in the next class we will go into much more philosophy and then we will do some charts we will do it together you know we learned some philosophy we got some ideas now we do this and you will need to listen to that philosophy again so that you get your foundation very strong so let's go into the weekdays the varesha asha is lord the the lord so there are planetary lords for the weekdays you know the seven weekdays we have 
and uh, there are these planetary lords and agni is actually going and residing inside that or in other words that planet is lit up see there are seven bulbs in the sky in a room there are seven bulbs and on one day on sunday the red bulb lights up on monday the orange bulb lights up on tuesday the yellow bulb lights up on wednesday the green bulb lights up on thursday the blue bulb lights up on friday the indigo bulb lights up and on saturday the violet bulb lights up okay it's all about what day that bulb is lighting up they take turns so or the other bulbs get rest this is the shloka for the sapta vara adish Adityas Chachandrama Bhoma Buddhas Chata Brihaspati Shukra Shanish Charas Chaiva Vara Sapta Prakirtita. That is the Sanskrit. So it basically tells that the seven days are Aditya, that is the sun or Ravivara, Sunday, Chandrama, moon, Soma. You see the names I am using. Ravi. I use Ravi. Ra, Agni, Va, water. He who lifts the water up. If he does not lift the water, I won't have rainfall. If I don't have rainfall, I will die. Planet, life on earth will die without rainfall. I'm an animal, right? So Ravi Vara, Sunday. Soma, Soma is the Amrita, my blood. My blood is carrying the nectar to every little molecule in my body. Soma, Soma Vara. So Agni is going to the Soma. Mangalavara, auspicious protector, fighting for me, fighting for my needs, fighting for my property, struggling to keep me on top of things. Tuesday, Buddhavara, tired of the, all this struggle, is Buddhavara. Mimamsa, I will not fight anymore. This is Himsa, this is Ahimsa. First Himsa, first there has to be a fight. Then you say, okay, I will not fight anymore. I'm tired. Buddha Vara. Then Brihaspati Vara. When you take that decision, you start reading something. Brihaspati. The knowledge of the gurus will come. Or Guru Vara. That is why it's called Guru Vara. Then you go to a guru. I'm tired of this fighting and all. I have decided not to fight. Now I'm at peace. Guru, please give me some knowledge. Then Shukra Vara. Shukra, that is having children. Having got the knowledge of peace. Now I will marry. Because without peace, you can't marry, no? In agitation, you don't get married. So with peace, you get married. Shukravara. So you have children, progeny and all that. And finally, Shanivara. These are the seven days of the week in standard Vara order. Somvara, Buddhavara, Brihaspativara or Guruvara. And Shukravara are considered good for auspicious work in the external world. Now, please listen very carefully. That means Mondays, see, look at, it's very simple. Natural benefit planets are Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus, and a good moon, right? So Monday for the moon, Wednesday for Mercury, Thursday for Jupiter, Friday for Venus are considered good days. Why are they good days? Because the lords are good planets. Okay. Tuesdays, Mangalavar, Ravivar, that is Sunday. And Shaniwar are considered bad days and they are used for harsh external work or purification and rest internal work. So, so whenever you talk of work, there is an internal work and there is an external work. You've got to work internally also. And that is the spiritual work that you do with yourself. So these days are good for harsh work externally like tuesday may be a very good day to file a case in a court then the battle will be very strong right and then and then you will demolish and kill and destroy a uh, tuesday may for for, for for anything which is very harsh you want to demolish a building choose tuesday okay you want to shift from one house to another house choose saturday because it is called instability right 
instability is happening no you're shifting from one house to another house you're shifting from one office to the other office choose sunday like that you know things which are destabilizing things that are breaking down these days are good external world but internally internally these are also these are good actually for for uh, reflection for mantra for burning bad karmas for example if it's a tuesday i can i can burn karmas associated with mars so why should i be doing creating more karma externally i can i can go inside and do mantras and burn more mangal karma on that day on a saturday if i do mantras i can be burning more saturn karma simple ego you want to get over the ego problem worship shiva on a sunday and the and the ego is gone once the ego goes the barrier between you and the guru will go away there is only one curtain between you and knowledge and that is called ahankara and that ahankara the cause of that is the sun me me right datri aditya so you to get over that you can do mantras on sunday very extensively and the ego will go away you have to burn it from inside not outside so that's how these weekdays are used the this part is in this shloka guru chandra buddha shukra shubha vara subhe smrita krurastu krura krityeshu sada bhoma arka surya jah so this is a overview of the grahas now you observe from sun to saturn the grahas are ruling the weekdays sun moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn very clear ravi som mangal budh brihaspati shukra shani and the days are here okay rahu and ketu don't find a place over here they they, they don't have a place in this but because they are papa grahas malefic planets they are allowed see they are malefic planets so how will they get into this scheme see unless they enter the vara they can't influence the human being i am a manushya a human being i can only be influenced through agni without agni i cannot be influenced at all so what rahu does is he gets into saturn and ketu gets into mars so they say half of tuesday ketu will rule and rahu rules half of saturday it's very interesting that ketu has a lot of light he likes light whereas rahu loves darkness so i can also say that well rahu must be associated with amavasya because he loves darkness and then ketu is always opposite of rahu simple logic whatever rahu likes ketu must like the opposite so if rahu loves amavasya ketu loves purnima so therefore rahu gets into saturn and he will prefer the night of saturday so if saturday has to be broken into two parts the day time is actually saturn and the night time is more rahu okay if if tuesday is broken into two parts then ketu will choose the day time he'll say no no i like the light so the day time of tuesday will be ketu and the night time will be mars this is as far as agni distribution is concerned okay so will you keep this in mind that rahu gets into the night of saturday and ketu gets into the day time of tuesday because of the agni distribution light vara is from vasara now in the next class next sunday we will talk about vasara vara and vasara are similar but not exactly the same they actually different you will see the difference in the next class vasa means abode or residence ra is agni so basically agni first comes into vasa so vasara then he becomes vara some people say it is an corruption maybe maybe i don't know but i know that there is a difference between vasara and vara there is a difference between the abode of agni and his manifestation in the weekdays that which does not have a body cannot shine nor hold heat remember the rule that which does not have a body 
cannot shine. So Rahu and Ketu don't shine because they don't have bodies. If they don't shine, they don't have Agni. They don't shine, so they don't have Agni and they cannot hold heat. So therefore Rahu and Ketu are fundamentally cold planets. From the heat point of view, both Rahu and Ketu are very cold. Rahu in fact is so cold, he's cold as death. The body has become so cold that it is cold as death. Saturn is cold, but Rahu is cold as death. So the nodes Rahu and Ketu are mathematical points, bodiless curve. You understood this. Okay. Now, you see a beautiful image of Shiva. Actually, Rudras, this is called Saptamurti, not Ashtamurti. Very often people don't know about what this is. So they call it Ashtamurti. Ashta means eight. The eight forms of Shiva or the eight faces of Shiva. Some other day I'll teach you about eight faces of Shiva. But right now, because we are learning about Agni, we have to learn about seven faces of Shiva. If you look at this and count the number of bodies, you have one in the bottom, two, three, four above that, and a fan, umbrella. You see the umbrella? This is standing and then you have these three. And then another umbrella above that, five, six, seven. You see that? So there are actually only seven forms over here. So this is not Ashtamurti. This is Saptamurti. Sapta means seven. This standing form, standing form of the Devata is associated with Lagna. Lagna is the standing form. Okay? And he's alone. You observe, he is not with anybody. He is left hand is down and the right hand is up okay left hand is down in a in in a certain mudra you observe the middle finger and the ring finger are pointed inwards and the index finger and the pinky finger are pre this is a left hand is holding this mudra the right hand is holding some other mudra where the index finger has been held so this is a kind of jnana mudra but instead of instead of down this jnana mudra is up knowledge you see he is holding the knowledge over here so he is blessing us with knowledge with the right hand and the left hand is doing something homework find out what is this mudra in which the middle finger and the uh, uh, ring finger are held by the thumb and why left hand for this and why right hand for this we need to work a little more on this but i leave it there this alone is advaita lord he is undivided advaita non duality so therefore the first sunday in the natural order we are taking the natural order of the weekday don't break it sunday the sun will represent advaita non duality then he rises the agni rises the next day is monday so the one in between over here is moon the monday the sun is standing over here moon is over here and this moon is dual because already the duality has come and he spreads on both sides so you see the fire when it rises it is spreading it is spreading the fire is spreading you see the fire the fire has spread it is rising like this and it has spread over here in the middle portion this is called the yellow portion of the fire right it has spread so we have monday then first he goes to the left hand you observe from monday he is going to the left hand which is tuesday then to the right hand which is wednesday so the left hand is fighting himsa. The right hand is ahimsa. So did you get the idea? 
the left hand is about fighting is about battle is about destruction is is violent violent prayer whereas the right hand is about peaceful shanti ahimsa so the offering is being done with the right hand in the in this third day the offering is done with the left hand whereas monday both the hands are together like namaste so is his equal on both sides see his hand posture the right hand is on the chest the right hand is on the chest region he is pointing to what is dear so these three you will remember that the first umbrella the first spread of the fire agni is on the first day it is very sharp second third and fourth it has spread and fifth sixth and seventh it is spread but it is darkening now it is darkening at the upper level it is darkening it is becoming more and more dark in the lower levels this is red fire out here it becomes orange then it is yellow and green you see that the colors are here whereas out here it is blue indigo and violet so the upper fires thursday friday and saturday fires the light is dark you look at a flame you look at a flame the upper portion of the flame will be darker color than the middle of the flame and the lower will have the sharpest red this upper portion the straight up is the protector for he is the one who is right on top this is the one above him he is manifesting him the sun is going to the moon the fire is going to the moon but he is the one on top he is the guru that is why thursday ruled by jupiter is the guru of the sun so you see the in this way we know that if sunday is over here the guru is over here right on top and see both his arms are upwards to pointed to the shuddha amrita chakra or some say no no this hands are actually on the sahasrara chakra that is where the guru is sitting the the guru is sitting on the head the parameshti guru is sitting on the head so this guru is putting his two hands on the head and on his right hand side but he is not going to the left because he is guru he does not like to go to the left he does not naturally go to the left he does not he is jupiter he is the guru chandra will go to the left he will fight for what he is right but guru will not go to the left guru will naturally go to the right and this is friday and then from here is saturday so this is how the day is so the fifth is righteous very very righteous he is the guru he tells you what is right what is good whereas the sixth is satisfaction love bhakti it comes from the sixth the left hand you see the left is the left hand saturday is tapas sorrow suffering so the good thing is tapas the good thing that is happening out there is tapas the tapasya to burn to burn your sin you are burning sin that is the good thing happening otherwise all you are getting is suffering and sorrow now you observe in the left hand side is tamas on the right hand side is rajas mercury and venus of wednesday and friday are on the right hand side they are rajas so when somebody says i am right handed it is rajas somebody says i am left handed it is tamas be in the center take the center path that is the path of sattva so did you see the derivation of planets this is how the planets were derived as sattva rajas and tamas so which planets are naturally sattva sun is sattva moon is sattva and jupiter is sattva who has the highest sattva jupiter has the highest sattva then the moon and then the sun who has rajas venus and mercury have rajas venus has higher rajas than mercury who has tamas saturn and mars have tamas saturn has higher tamas than mars 
for saturn is something is a tamas that can come and stay for a very very long time the tamas of mars will burn out very soon anger cannot stay in the body for too long sooner or later it will burn out whereas this saturn it can stay till death so who is a higher tamas saturn is a higher tamas than this so this was the derivation of sattva rajas and tamas guna of the planets using the vara in the saptarudra this is called saptarudra pratyadi devata in this form rudra is manifesting he goes up then spreads goes up then spreads agni the giver of dhi propels human intelligence upwards so the intelligence is actually being propelled upwards towards perfection and god just as flames of a fire leap upwards now we are to go into uh, studying the effect of the weekdays how the varas are affecting our life and how these varas are good or bad and what are they indicating we will start with sunday you could be born on any day you could be born on any day i am very concerned with the pratyadi devata why am i concerned with the pratyadi devata because agni is the adi devata of surya surya's adi devata is agni pratyadi devata is rudra so it is rudra who removes the imperfections of agni we human beings are guided by agni we are all having imperfection our light our knowledge is not perfect our wealth is not perfect our desire for wealth is not perfect we desire wrong things rudra removes the imperfections that is why he is called pratyadi devta once the imperfections are removed we will move towards perfection that is why pratyadi devta so for sunday when the sun is strong these are the qualities that the person will exhibit he will be resolute fortunate brilliant large hearted and dear to others very submissive submissive sunday sun submissive hello what happened to the hankar that means sun is very strong absolutely strong that means the stronger the sun is becoming the stronger the sun is becoming the lesser the ahankar is there ahankar is a flaw in the agni that flaw is removed by ishana there are two forms the principal form is ishana ishana is the lord of all knowledge for those in the spiritual path or seeking gyana and vigyana that is knowledge both gyana and vigyana is knowledge if you are seeking it then worship ishana with this mantra om hom ishanaya nama om hom ishanaya nama om hom ishanaya nama but those who are in sansara like most of us we are in sansara we 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 want to just remove some ignorance we want to learn a little bit of jyotish astrology we 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 may be good people you know we are generally good people you are in sansara so basically ignorance has to be removed all this cheating and all this cheating uh, stealing and all these things have to go that's a very very bad habit because surya is the one who sees it all surya sees everything he is the eye of god he sees every karma there is no way that you can escape his eyes and if you worship surya what is lost can be recovered so if let us say somebody has stolen something and the person is worshiping surya so whoever has stolen it that thing will burn that that thing will be useless so even if you have stolen something it will not work this cheating cycle stealing cycle is not good ego problems have to go om sharvaya nama sh sh talavya sh sharvaya om sharvaya nama 
So these are the forms. Later we will learn what is the meaning of the forms or you can study these forms. If the sun is nirbala, weak, will always be in rags, unrighteous, highly fraudulent or untruthful fellow, ill disposed to friends and elders, may live in hiding or in the shadows. See, some of these will be true, not all of them all the time. So we will see some charts to see how this works. This is the chart of Pandit Motilal Nehru, the father of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. He was Pisces Lagna, Jupiter exalted in the fifth house, moon in the Lagna. You see the Parivartana, very fantastic yoga. The son is exalted. He came from a lower middle class, lower middle class family. He had to stay with his elder brother to get educated in law. Somehow he got educated, became a lawyer and started his practice in Ilabad. Those days, uh, those days it was Ilabad. nowadays it is Prayag. So that's where he started his practice at Prayag, at the Ganga, and uh, uh, the, the uh, I think the courts were there, and he earned a lot of money. He became extremely wealthy, extremely. You can see the sun is exalted. It is strong. The person is resolute, fortunate, brilliant. Yes, he was a brilliant lawyer. Otherwise, who will come to him? Absolutely brilliant. Large-hearted. Yes, he did huge donations also. Dear to others. Huge circle of friends. Huge. Absolutely huge circle of friends. The Birlas, the Tatas, and all were his friends and clients. So it is he actually who rose from nothing to being a very, very wealthy and a very, very powerful man of Uttar Pradesh. Because of his connections, his son, Jawaharlal Nehru became friendly to the Birlas, to the Tatas, to everybody. So he had the good fortune of father, you see. So you see the status of father, the position of father, the wealth of father works. Here he got nothing from his father because the ninth from the sun has a debilitated Rahu, but he, he worked his way up. He went up because of that. But you see, extreme high position. The problem with such a powerful Surya, the danger is he may display contempt for others. Contempt, vermin, cockroach. You start thinking of other human beings like cockroaches. That is the problem even when it is strong. And then if he starts doing that, he will lose fame. So what happened? He became an extreme position. He had a very powerful position in the Congress party. Those days, Congress of A.O. Hume was a very powerful party. And you see, what did he do? He left the Congress. Why? Useless fellows. They're all petitioning all the time. Swaraj party. I want to, we should have our own government. I, I, I don't like this working under the British and all. Okay. So basically, he had his own Swaraj party. Then the non cooperation movement was done by Gandhi. He had contempt for the non cooperation movement. What is this non cooperation movement? What is this non violent thing that Gandhi is doing? He is foolish. See, contempt. He preferred cooperation with the British Raj. Very funny. You want Swaraj, but you want cooperation with the British. So you expect that I will cooperate with the British and the British will give me a few goodies. So how will the British give you a little bit of goodies? You will be the guy who will be negotiating for the goodies. So you become all powerful by being the middleman. You see? That was his whole game plan. This exalted Surya is with Mercury and Venus. So being exalted and with Mercury and Venus, he will compel Venus to behave himself and exalt. I am exalted. You are sitting with me. You also rise. Mercury, you are sitting with me. You also rise. Now I can understand Venus rising, Mercury rising, but, but there are some issues out here that I have with this Venus. 
and the seventh Lord Mercury getting, you see, if I am right, this Venus has got combusted, you see. Anyway, you see, this Venus and Mars are having an exchange over here. You can see that. And that is how the energy of Mangal is coming to the sun. So therefore, the sun is becoming even more powerful and Venus is behaving as if he is going to Taurus. Taurus is the home. So his family or home, this is second house, huh? family will grow and grow and grow and grow. Sun exalted in the second house and, and he is born on Sunday. If the same horoscope, same horoscope were to be born on Thursday, Agni is not here. Agni is with Jupiter. You see the difference? It is not your family. It is this which is growing. It is Jupiter which is growing. Because the Agni is there. That is the root. That picture which you saw, the root, you see the Shiva with the thing, the Ishana. That root has changed. So even two people having the same horoscope but born on different days, Agni has shifted. And that makes all the difference in the chart. Here it is with the family in the house of wealth. So a lot of wealth. Submissive? No, he was not submissive. He was conveniently submissive. He was absolutely not submissive to his own people. For three generations, three generations, see the triangle of Agni. Three generations were prime ministers. His son, his granddaughter and great-grandson were all prime ministers of India. So this Agni is an absolutely powerful Agni. And this Parivartana just shows Mangal is supporting him. Second house, shooting up. Family, shooting up. Look at this house. Here we have the sun in the 8th house. Now that is not good. The sun in the 8th house is absolutely bad. We don't want the sun in the 8th house. Especially when you are born on a Sunday. Here you see, he is born on a Sunday. He is born on a Sunday. The Agni is with the sun in the 8th house. This means it is a chronic disease that can happen. You see, if the Agni is in the 8th house, you can have a very strong chronic disease. And this Agni now is with Mercury. So this disease is associated with the skin or with your looks because the skin is outside and it makes your looks, your looks, your body, your Prithvi Tattva is getting afflicted in some form and manner. Mercury is not combust. It is very far from the sun, but it is with the sun. Now let us look at Mercury carefully. So we know that this terrible Agni, some kind of anger, is hitting Mercury. And this sun is in the shadows. Eighth house is the shadow. And we see that Mercury is hit by the sun, by Mars. Mars is also aspecting. You can see that. Mars is looking at the sun. And Rahu is also looking at the sun. So I have three malefics, Sun, Mars, and Rahul looking at Mercury. Is this a curse? Two or more malefics? Be careful. Mercury cannot handle two malefics. Jupiter can handle two malefics. He's a big guy. Mercury is a kid. He's very young. He can't fight two malefics at the same time. And there's a third one on top of that, Rahu. On top of that, is there an Atma Karaka association? Well, Atma Karaka, Jupiter has Rashi Drishti also, and they are in the house of the Atma Karaka. Okay. Is the eighth lord, Jupiter is also the eighth lord. Okay. Seal, it's a case of a curse. He became an American circus sideshow freak because that's the only thing he could do. He was born with the skin like an alligator over his entire body. His whole body was having the skin of an alligator. Other than his skin, he was normal. His mom was scared by alligator when she was pregnant. So who was scared? Who was scared? Mom. Remember this. This is what is said. 
that his mom was scared by an alligator when she was pregnant and we know from the bhagavad gita that the child has the energy of whatever the mother is dwelling on during pregnancy if the mother gets very scared by an alligator and she is dwelling on that fear and she keeps seeing that alligator image in her head then that will come and why did this come because it was meant to come it was in his karmas so because it is in his karmas it will come but why did the mother see it fourth lord son fourth lord is son it is with mercury now let us look at the sun even more carefully the sun is in 4 degrees it is in the second pada of mula gandanta you thought gandanta is only for the moon no any planet gandanta is like a whirlpool any planet that goes there is getting inside that washing machine it's the graha is passing through a serious washing machine god has thrown that graha into the washing machine and has switched on the button so what is that graha going through you can well imagine think of a washing machine you are twist you are just you are just in circles so varesha in a dustana this is the lesson that we take away from here in the 6th house 8th house or 12th house for which saturn is a karaka you see saturn or the shadow is a karaka for the 6th 8th and 12th you see 6th house 8th house 12th house this is painful you don't want the varesha in the 6th house 8th house or 12th house if it is there you will have a lot of pain in this life there will look at him dashas it has nothing to do with dashas the whole life his skin is like an alligator it has nothing don't blame dashas for this it is agni do you understand how important the panchanga is now because it is something that can complete that one tattva and such a critical one agni for human beings so he, how does he spend his whole life in hiding in the shadows he doesn't meet anybody he, he goes from his tent to the circus performs and then when the circus is off he comes back and hides in his tent food comes over there doesn't meet anybody nobody can see him but 12th is not as bad as the 6th and 8th as far as agni is concerned keep that in mind 12th is not so bad 12th has a different role over here 2 and 12 are different 6 and 8 are different 6 and 8 are the danger points if agni if the weak day lord if in your horoscope you have your weak day lord in the 6th house or the 8th house that is an alarm now let's come to monday dhya we always start with the pratyadi devta his form is called mahan mahan great you are a great one you are really great mahadev mahat these are supreme you are the supreme you are the king who is the king in you your mind is the king your mind is the king in your system and the mind is for which planet from the moon and therefore the form that shiva takes is this mahat the mind this shiva is eight armed he has eight arms remember mahadev eight armed and therefore his mantra must be eight syllable om mahadevaya namah om mahadevaya nama om mahadevaya nama see it's a eight syllable mantra this shiva is mahadev he who is the protector of the mind he will he will correct the mind he has the power to correct the mind what a great one see this shiva this rudra when he when he goes into monday 
he becomes Mahadev. That is the form he becomes. And you can see there are eight arms. You can count that. One, two, three, four on the left. One, two, three, four on the right. This is a particular posture called the Tripurantaka Mahadev. Tripurantaka Mahadev. Acharya Tulsidas sings while offering the great Ramayana to Shiva. You see, Tulsidas wrote Ramayana, no? And there is a part of the history where he had to place the Ramayana inside uh, uh, Vishwanath temple in Kashi. There he was singing this mantra. Om Namah Shivaya, Gauri Shankaraya, Mahadevaya, Namo Namah, Madanantakaya, Mukti Pradaya, Shrimat Shankaraya, Namo Namah. You see, this mantra of Tulsi, they say Shiva actually manifested for him. You can read that later from where. So what happens when the moon is strong with Bala? He has many friends, very pleasing body, famous, will thoroughly enjoy various kinds of wealth. Now see this, the mind likes goodies. Huh? So it enjoys every kind of wealth and luxuries and articles and artifacts and Mm -hmm. everything you know the moon is the moon and then of course here's a lot of learning but this is very wide learning very very wide there's a lot of knowledge about uh, um, about medicine there is some knowledge about uh, you know they, 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 these are the people no? they the web md and it's the moon no? so it has knowledge about cooking they have knowledge about scriptures they have knowledge about dharma they have knowledge about marts they have knowledge about geography i mean they, they, they have very wide variety they know so much is the mind it enjoys everything that the planet can offer and what happens when the moon is nirbala weak will face various kinds of harm is dangerous for you he will be in servitude you are serving all the time you have no options you are a servant, otherwise you can't survive. Devoid of dharma and happiness, you see. There is no dharma or no happiness. Now that depends upon the moon's position. From these houses, you have to see. If the moon is weak, you have to see, okay, which houses are hit more. So from the moon, you see which houses are getting hit. Eat others' food and will have numerous blemishes, many, many flaws and faults. The person should be born on Monday and the moon should be very weak in the chart or afflicted. It may be a strong moon and afflicted. Then all the blemishes will come out. So both things can be there. The moon may be exalted, but with Rahu, Ketu, Shani, Mangal and, and in Amavasya, then what? What will I do with the exaltation? Get the idea? So use your Jyotish knowledge to study that one planet. See, the advantage that we are having with this, one focus. I need to know what day you are born and that planet I'm going to look at. Okay? So let's look at some people who are born on Monday. Indira Gandhi. Wow. She's born on a Monday. On Cancer Lagna. Wow. This is fabulous. So therefore, many friends, of course, of course, she had such a long list of friends. Pleasing body. Yes, yeah, she was very beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. She had the famous Indra Gandhi uh, love curl in her hair. You know, that, that streak of white that went to her hair, which, which made her stand out like a flame on the head. She was famous, very famous. Thoroughly enjoyed wealth and luxuries, absolutely without doubt. In fact, she is famed for the finest sari collection. People who know her, people who know her in a private capacity have said that nobody can match the sari collection of Indira Gandhi. Nobody, it's impossible. So she was like in competition with Jayalalitha, the only other one who could probably challenge her in sari collection. Wealthy, powerful friends in business, media, prime minister. I mean, she was everything. And look at the moon a bit more carefully. Saturn Atma Karaka is also in cancer in the house of the moon. So this moon is absolutely enjoying herself. Full of Agni. But this moon has the aspect of Rahu. You see that? Gradrishti. 
So from the moon, what are the bad houses? Twelfth, the moon hates the twelfth house from it. Keep that in mind. Who's there? Venus is there. So what happens to your marriage? That's gone. Huh? There's a blemish over there. Loss of spouse, loss of child. Venus, Jupiter, Parivartan. See that? From the Agni, you treat Agni like a Lagna. From the Agni, I'm having this Venus, Jupiter. So the significations of these planets are getting a hit. Okay. Anyway. Other things you can see. There are other blemishes. Saturn is aspecting this. Not good. Sun is aspecting this. You think that will give an ego on the person? Could give. Let's go into Tuesday. Pratyadi Devta form is Rudra. Rudra is the dispeller of sorrow. If there is sorrow, Rudra gets agitated. See, why does anger come? Anger comes when sorrow is trying to come in. Somebody has taken my ice cream. So first sorrow came that somebody took my ice cream. Then anger. I will beat him. See that? First the sorrow that somebody took my ice cream. I will beat him follow. Without sorrow coming, why will you go and beat the guy? Some people still do. Some people just like to beat for the fun of it. So in any case, that's a flaw, right? When you just want to beat somebody because sorrow came or you want to beat somebody for the heck of it. In any case, it's a flaw. Because if he has taken your ice cream and he has already eaten it, by beating him, you are not getting the ice cream back. And you want to beat somebody for fun, that's also not a good thing to do. So, you know, it's a left-handed thing that's happening to you. You are, you are going down. So you have to correct karma. The karma has to be corrected. And you have to worship Rudra. He is the dispeller of sorrows. Rudra has the power to correct Mars and also to remove sorrow. Double, double action. Sorrow comes from Saturn. So Rudra removes the negative of Mars as well as the sorrow of Saturn. Om Namo Bhagavate Rudraya. It's a 10 syllable mantra and Rudra has 10 arms. So whenever you are worshipping Rudra, you need a picture of Rudra or an idol of Rudra which is having 10 arms. Then you can do this mantra. Now let's count. Left hand side, one, two, three, four, five. Right hand side from top, one, two, three, four, five. Blessing. Okay. So that's 10 armed. Perfect picture. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Rudraya. Om Namo Bhagavate Rudraya. Om Namo Bhagavate Rudraya. Baudayana Rudra Mantra. Rishi is Baudayana. When Mars is in strength, favorable to Vedic teachings and Shastra. If Mangal is favorable, you will love the Veda. You will love the Shastra. It is Mars that gives you love for Vedic knowledge. Why? Because Mars, Mula Trikona, is Aries. Agni, I want all knowledge, is Veda. Virtuous. That means you will keep Brahmacharya also. So strong. You will honor everybody. Mangal is very, very powerful. People will feel very secure in your presence. You will have a lot of good pleasures, but approved, not unapproved. You will have much fortune, property particularly. Radiant, reddish, is it? Fond of applying scented ornaments. It is very interesting that for some reason, Mars always likes to put perfume. Why? Because Mars has a foul-smelling body. Durgandha. When Mangal is becoming very, very strong, Mercury, Prithvi is getting very, very afflicted. Because these two can't be strong at the same time. So if Mangal is getting very, very strong, Mercury is getting... So, so the skin has a bad smell. Durganda. So you apply scented ointments. But if Mars is weak, then you are ugly. Definitely ugly. But you are rich with paraphernalia required for bathing. You are always collecting all articles for bathing. 
all kinds of articles for bathing sauna bath this bath that bath this special soap this special oil for bath this thing all kinds of superior things you are collecting for bathing that means in your horoscope mars is very very weak you but you are endowed with ornaments are mars weak and you are endowed with ornaments yes why because the money that you got you are not spending in property you are spending in ornaments that is mars that is weak you are buying rings for gemstones mars weak you are buying property mars strong inclined to undertake religious vows and ancient systems right that is good so even when weak there is a lot of good but what happens if the vows are of a bad kind you know this negativity of mars can be exploited be careful because if you are taking a vow for a bad karma then you become terrorist no you see you look at terrorists they have taken religious vows of ancient system to kill i will kill 100 people i will kill 50 people this is coming from a weak mars om namo bhagavate rudraya bahadur shah to the last mughal emperor of india last normally if mangal shows up if mangal shows up remember he is the last and mangal is very very strong you can see that this mangal is very strong he is in scorpio he is born on a tuesday you can see that over here in data mangal is strong in scorpio absolutely but he is with mercury i told you these two will not get along and this mercury he is going to make a very foul uh, odor very very nobody wants what do you mean by foul smell actually the smell is not coming out of your body you have put beautiful scents you have had a good bath it is not the foul smell the energy coming out of your body is such that nobody wants to hang around you for some reason people don't want to hang around you the moment they come near you they feel that you are a horrible you distaste because mercury is about friendship no so everybody leaves you alone so he is a great poet he became a great poet because he is alone what else he will do sit and write poetry anyway you can see the moon is with venus mind is there now he, this is conjunction of sun and moon is raja yoga for aries for aries and scorpio for aries lagna and scorpio lagna sun moon conjunction like amavasya chaturdashi pratipad all these bad bad doshas is actually good for mangal so if you are born in scorpio lagna and it is amavasya it is fantastic if you are aries lagna and it is chaturdashi it is absolutely good for you that is mangal you know you got to understand a negative to a negative is good for the negative so mars good agni agni is good favorable to vedic teachings and shastra yes he was neutral views on religion but god fearing and a very honest man he was very virtuous to that there is no doubt lot of pleasures yes they are allowed for wives fortunes he was an emperor come on he did he was not short of properties and things like that radiant well can't say so much he was a symbol of revolt against the east india company he he became the symbol so that was his radiance you know you know before a flame goes out a lamp or a candle that is burning before the flame goes out it jumps for the last time that was bahadur shah zafar he was the last flame of the mughal emperor and this revolt against the east india company was the last revolt but in the process both he and the company got destroyed see the east india company was fully taken over by the crown so east india company was destroyed and the mughal emperor the entire he, he was the last the entire lineage was destroyed and where do we see that we see that in the 8th house jupiter 8th house jupiter is aspected by saturn 
you see this saturn and jupiter are in mutual aspect later you will learn this yoga of saturn jupiter that you and your enemy will both be destroyed so both of them gaziyo mein bo rahegi gaziyo mein gazi is the poets and the peers you know the gazis gaziyo mein bo rahegi bo smell rahegi will stay jab tak as long as the scent of faith gaziyo mein bo rahegi jab tak imam ki as long as the scent of faith remains in the hearts of the gazis takht london tak chalegi tej hindustan ki so long shall the sword of hindustan flash before the throne of london what a beautiful poetry it is this kind of poetry which you know flared up the uh, sipo is the mutiny uh, the mutiny against the company and they said that uh, you know so he was able to write powerful poetry gaziyo mein bo rahegi jab tak iman ki takht london tak chalegi tej hindustan ki okay but they he but he, the problem was he was controlled with a pension he was exiled to burma and a great poet you can read the other thing so basically you can see with these people with these people the ending of life the last part of life is a sad one if the agni is of mangal and it is having the drishti of shani i don't want drishti then the last part of life is i mean he dies away in exile and all that anyway this is a chart of bian singh bian singh was the bodyguard of prime minister indira gandhi and assassinated her on 31st october 1984 singh was the first one to draw a shotgun and first to fire three shots into her abdomen so his job was to guard indira gandhi he shot indira gandhi okay later on he was shot to death same day same day 31st so basically he also died and the one he attacked indira gandhi she also died both of them died together in the previous case the emperor lost the lineage and the east india company also got destroyed very interesting here we have mangal in aries in own sign and he is born on a tuesday so both you and your enemy will die and who and who did you choose to be your enemy the one you were supposed to guard so mars is strong it is very strong but it is in the 12th house very peculiar this 12th house energy what is the 12th house about what is the most important thing about 12th house faith 12th house is faith can i trust you are you trustworthy mangal no you are not see mangal is born on tuesday manglik dosh it is a dosha and this manglik dosh is very strong you are not okay so you are not trustworthy as far as that rich with parna fena required for bathing that i don't know i don't think he was a security officer i don't know how he is rich with about soap what soap he will have endowed with ornaments after death after death because it is 12th house 12th house it is after death whatever is in the 12th house if it has to bless you it will come after death it will not come when you are alive after death the 12th house got activated you see the 12th house is post mortem after death a gurudwara was named after him there is a gurudwara in punjab which is named after him and he was declared martyrs of sikhism so after death he was declared a martyr and he was a gurudwara in his name inclined to take religious vows of ancient systems he took religious oath to avenge operation blue star desecration of the golden temple in amritsar so indira gandhi his boss she had ordered the attack on the golden temple <coughs> to flush out the extremists inside bindran wale and all of them but you see the rule is that in india 
a place of worship if anybody comes to take shelter no matter who that place you cannot take arms inside but unfortunately you see the operation blue star did some desecration of the golden temple parts of the temple were broken and things like that which which see if you had only gone in and somehow caught them and come out it is understandable but you know it was not possible to do that for whatever reasons anyway it is karma you know on both sides it was karma of indra gandhi bian singh also had to take the revenge so it took this oath and assassinated her so this this teaching this teaching is right inclined to take and religious so it's not a question of strong or weak you must see both sides see mars is strong because it is an own sign mars is weak because it is in 12th house so look at both the sides of the coin we don't we don't know which side is actually work you see that i will take a little break now we are seeing the chart of elister crawley he is also born on a tuesday oh and this mars you can see is exalted which is what strong no it is in mks marana karaka sthana now here i am bringing in another concept into our discussions a planet in marana karaka sthana is not good when it comes to agni when it comes to agni marana karaka is absolutely not good okay so mars in the 7th house is not good if you are born on a tuesday it's exalted mars he came from a wealthy family all paraphernalia for bathing and all that stuff you know basically luxuries were there he is born to wealth endowed with ornaments yes all sorts of artifacts for his magic now he loved magic why because mars is in capricorn you see look at the agni agni is the focus of the horoscope is the light the brain is like an insect the brain is like an insect agni is the light wherever the light is the brain will go there you see this is where the light is focused on agni is in capricorn so the light is in capricorn get the idea and because of this we are seeing capricorn we have mars with saturn this is yama the god of death he was called the wickedest man in the world and labeled satanist why would such a label be given to somebody's reputation you see you see the agni how how bad it has become it has become very dark very very uh, associated with death too much of death energy his lagna lord moon is with rahu you see the reputation is going because of that you may have this combination but look at the lagna lord the lagna lord will fight to protect your reputation here the lagna lord is with rahu in again in marana karaka sthana agni in marana karaka with saturn lagna lord in marana with marana karaka rahu so shani and rahu have taken over the total agni shani is with mars yama rahu is with moon that's it british occultist writer mountaineer who was a practitioner of magic as he spelled it with a k and called himself the beast triple six he was denounced in his own time for his decadent lifestyle i mean absolutely devilish guy and had few followers but he became a cult figure after his death funny after death these people become famous you see bian singh they made a gurdwara his i think father become a member of parliament and things like that well, why is it that this mangal is giving good results after death okay so we need to think about this mars and post death it is as if when this person dies as if this that 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 soul suffering has ended and that whole family sort of is now coming out of that energy keep that about mangal 
So now we are coming to Mercury, Wednesday, birth. In strong, he's very charitable, favorite friend, very good friend, charming in appearance. You cannot have a friend better than Mercury. Charming in appearance, yes, that's Prithvi Tattva. He'll give you good looks. Learned. Why he, he's learned a lot? That's Mercury, no? He's the he's a permanent sishya. Permanent sishya. Always learning, learning, learning. Extremely wise, blessed by Jupiter. Then he becomes wise. If the wisdom of Jupiter is not coming, this wisdom is not coming over here. Very intelligent. That's Mercury, Digbala and Lagna. Negative Nirbala Mercury undergoes a lot of difficulties. It's unsurmountable. And particularly financial because Mercury rules that. Untruthful to his elders, there will be a time when you will be on the receiving end for, from your elders because they will think that you lied. Will not get the fruits of his labor. You will work and work and work and others will eat the fruits. That is destiny when it is Nirbala. Will lose his children due to enemies. Oh, look at the sixth house carefully. If Mercury is there and you are born on a Wednesday, then maybe you will lose children due to enemies. The Devata form is Sarva with a Sir, Dantya Sir. Okay, not Sharva. Sharva is with the sun. Sarva is with Mercury. Sarva means whole, entire, all, everyone, everything, complete in all parts, complete in all parts. See, that's Prithvi Tattva, no? How do you identify body parts? Every part of you that has Prithvi Tattva in it is a body part. For example, the air that you breathe in and the air that you breathe out, is that you? No. Why is that not you? Because you don't identify that air as you. So to identify something as you, it must be associated with Prithvi. In the higher spiritual level, we worship Vishwa, universe. Why, Why only everything about me? So when it comes to Mercury, the question is, how big is that hole? Is it very small, like me and my family? Is it slightly bigger, me and my community? Slightly me and my city. Come on, grow, grow up, me and my state. Come on, me and my country. Then this me finally becomes the whole world and then finally whole universe. Do you see the expansion? So Mercury has to expand by learning how to expand from Jupiter. The most important learning is learning how to expand. That is Vishwa. And, and for that, it is more Ketu. Like you can say it's more Ketu because it's going right into the universe, into nothingness, because you are becoming more and more smaller, more and more insignificant. As the world is becoming bigger, you are becoming smaller. Me and my family, you are a big shot. Me and my community, you are somebody. Me and my city, okay, still somebody maybe. Maybe, maybe nobody. Me and my state, okay, nobody. Accept it. Hardly one or two people will know you. Then me and my nation, come on. See that? Om Sarvaya Namah. Om Sarvaya Namah. Now I'm looking inward. I want to make myself whole. I want to make myself complete. I feel very incomplete. Something is missing in my life. I am alone. Something is missing. Om Sarvaya Nama. Complete me. I, you, I do work and I always leave things uncompleted. Om Sarvaya Nama. Complete it. Finish it. Om Vishveshwaraya Nama. Finish your spiritual journey. See that? One Sarvaya is more Sansara. More this world. Om Vishveshwaraya Nama. Complete the spiritual journey. It's a very, very beautiful mantra. 
Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. I think the second president of India. Yeah, second president of India. First vice president of India. Mercury, very strong, very charitable. Yes. Favorite friend, very, very strong friend. Charming in appearance. I will not say that. Other people said he was. He was very tall. Definitely very, very respectable appearance. Learned, absolutely. Absolutely learned. Extremely wise, yes, very intelligent, without doubt. This Mercury and Venus are in Dharma Karmadipati Yoga with Mercury exalted. See his name Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Mercury in Virgo, Radha Krishna. I think Prabhupada was uh, uh, Sagittarius Lagna with the same Mercury in Virgo, Radha Krishna. So Varesha Mercury exalted. Now he's born on a Wednesday. Is tenth Lord and Lagna Lord. Oh my God! And Dharma Karmadipati Raj Yoga, Kala Amrita Yoga. You see, this whole yoga is caught up in the Kala Amrita Yoga. One of India's most distinguished 20th century scholars of comparative religion and philosophy. So that is Mercury, absolutely learned philosopher. So. I need him to be, be born on Wednesday for this Mercury to be fully energized, the battery to be charged. Okay. Thursday. Well educated will gain excellent spouse. This is very important. Huh? If you are born on a Thursday and Jupiter is strong, you will get a fantastic spouse. Well disposed to relatives. See, very broad minded. Affable speaker and an expert in all arts. Very great expertise. Jupiter Nirbala. Your heroism will be injured. So you are going to do something and everybody thinks that, oh, he's a great guy. He has gone to do a very, very thing. Victory. No, you got defeated. You will face troubles through bilious disorders. See, now, now we are learning another new thing. That means if you are born on a Thursday, it's your liver that comes into the picture because Agni has gone to the liver. Fire is there, thirst, fever. So you are having fire problems. Remember, if Jupiter is weak, Agni dosha will come. If Jupiter is strong, fire cannot touch you. Thirst, very thirsty you are feeling. Feverish, weapons, and thieves are attacking you. So basically what has happened? Your protection has gone. Sagittarius is not able to protect you anymore. You are not righteous. That is the worst one. Not righteous. The particular form too of uh, uh, the Pratyadi Devta is Bhima. Bhima means awe-inspiring, terrific, terrible, huge, formidable, tremendous and grand. Like the sky, you know, you know, we are all living in Bhimalinga, all of us. We are Manushya, right? How are we protected? Look up in the daytime. You will find the Shivalinga right on top of your head. It's a beautiful Shivalinga that is going right above from top and is coming down on the eastern horizon and the western horizon and the north and the southern horizon. It's a Shivalinga right around you. You are living inside that Shivalinga. And that linga is called Bhima linga. Om Bhimaya Nama. Om Bhimaya Nama. Om Bhimaya Nama. Okay, we go to Calvin Coolidge. So you, President of the United States. And um, he was the 30th US President. And the Agni is with Jupiter. Interesting. And you can see that Jupiter is the Lord of the fifth house. And uh, uh, but the Jupiter is exalted. Now we have learned in Jyotish that when Jupiter or the moon are in the eighth from their own sign, there is death in that sign. Death is there. So his misfortune is his fifth lord is in 12th house. Fifth lord in the 12th house is Jupiter. So there is a danger of death in the fifth house. Remember this. Fifth Lord in the twelfth is very dangerous. Either you will, it will happen early and you will lose a pregnancy or the child will die later. Look at the chart of so many people. Fifth Lord in the twelfth losing children. 
and especially if it is Jupiter or the moon. Now, now this Saturn is Atma Karaka. He's sitting in Sagittarius. So Atma Karaka is the king and there is a death energy over here. So because he's born on a Thursday, this yoga is very strongly activated. So his boss died. Warren Harding, the 29th president of the U US, had a sudden death in 1923 when he was under Saturn Dasha, Jupiter Antar Dasha. Jupiter is in the 12th house, faith. And this thrust him into power. And in the same Antar Dasha, or the next Antar Dasha, Next Dasha, that is. In Mercury Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha. So Saturn, Jupiter, he came to power because Jupiter is having Agni. But Mercury is sitting with him to give some bad news. The death of the second sun happened. Now, second sun is ruled by Jupiter. Mercury, Mercury, Jupiter is fifth lord. See that? And it is conjoined Mercury. And that is when he got elected also. So he came power. So Jupiter gave him power, but loss of sun. And it happened in Mercury, Mercury. So you can see how it is working. Both the good promised by the fifth Lord's exaltation and the bad promised by the fifth Lord in the 12th, both are happening. So you want the power, there is a danger to your child. So it happened. But it is Agni, it will happen. You cannot get away with it. But look at this guy. After 25 years marriage, he wrote, for almost a quarter of a century, she has borne with my infirmities and I have rejoiced in her graces. Excellent spouse. Zarina Alexandra. She was also born on a Thursday, you see, and Jupiter is exalted. Again, just like the previous chart, Jupiter is exalted. So you cannot say that Jupiter is exalted and so I must get all good news. No. Depends where he is placed. I don't like Jupiter or the Varesha in 6th house or 8th house. Nor do I like him in 12th house. In 6th house and 8th house, I don't like him. Nor do I like him in the 12th house. And what is worse, I do not like Varesha in Maranakarakastana. I just don't like it. Here Jupiter as the Varesha has gone to Maranakaraka in the 3rd house. And everybody knows the story of Zarina Alexandra. Jupiter would indicate some Rishi, Sadhu, priest. There was some priest called... Uh, 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 some priest was there. Rasputin, Rasputin. Please read about Rasputin. And you see, mixed results are being obtained. You see, uh, Jupiter is in Maranabhava. Her heroism. Heroism here is actually a more reputation, can I say? The lady's grace, the respect of the lady. There were scandals about her relationship with Rasputin. You see, it was injured. People injured her reputation. This is her. It is not right to say such things about a lady. There is no proof of any such thing. Absolutely not. She was very nice to Rasputin because he was able to do some prayers and her son survived. And those days people believed in prayers. Nowadays people don't believe in prayers. And being born on a Thursday, definitely she will believe. And you can see that. She has a lot of faith. Twelfth Lord is in Lagna. Twelfth Lord is faith. If Twelfth Lord is in Kendra, you will have faith. If Twelfth Lord is strong, you have faith. If Twelfth Lord is weak, you don't have faith. So I said, the Twelfth House is a very peculiar house. You have faith. You see, if the Varesha is in Twelfth House, you have faith. Maybe you will do something wrong. But if you did it in good faith, God will bless you. After death it will come. All the other things I'm not interested, but the entire family got murdered. Entire family. Why? Saturn is Atma Karaka. Atma Karaka is king. King was her husband. The king was her husband. She did not have any other boss. Her boss is either her husband or the king. Here the king is her husband who is the boss. She, that and the whole family got killed because of this Marana Karakasthana of Varesha and exalted. 
not right yes no that is not right she was god fearing not fair now friday running out of time so i'm speeding up please bear with me venus bala you can see all these qualities you can read them aphasia scientific scientific temperament is coming from shukra shukra is giving scientific temperament all of you people i do not know many people have read some articles sometimes they say mars is very strong so he's having scientific temperament no mars is anger a person with anger cannot have a scientific temperament scientific temperament requires a coolness in the mind it's a different kind of temperament and that comes from venus venus is very scientific interested in many many shastras all kinds of sciences shastra is science i'm translating shastra as science over here highly dutiful absolutely parushrama what father says i will do even at the pain of death nobody can make a sacrifice bigger than venus keep that in mind enemies are absolutely eliminated it is foolish to be inimical to venus venus nirbala weak he will still eliminate his enemies so whether strong or weak enemies are getting in there is a greatness of sukra look at look at parashurama to understand will lose spouse now that is a sad one so venus will lose spouse why is venus losing spouse because you see agni and shukra shukra is jala tattva fundamentally and when agni goes into that i mean shukra is sort of not the shukra quality the jala quality is going down you get the idea agni is going inside shukra so the jala quality is going down so he is always interested in marriage but keep that in mind he is always interested in marriage he is very concerned about marriage but lo may lose spouse if venus is weak humiliated by others absolutely people will insult you they will humiliate you and and will lose spouse means what somebody you thought was your husband somebody you were ready to get married to suddenly the guy left you and ran away hasn't that happened with so many of you check up your venus and see if it has a connection with the varisha or any agni connection ever in grief all the time you are grieving and grieving abandoned by your kinsmen your whole family will abandon you all relatives will abandon you that is shukra which is weak nirbala bhava pratyadi devata is bhava bhava is existence you are praying to god please allow me to exist you have given birth to me allow me to exist i am not asking for a kingdom let me exist let me be creative let me the creation the well being let me have a little bit of prosperity welfare so you know it's it's about nice things of life the particular form of shiva is trayambaka and that name only that name only you cannot worship him as mrutunjaya or rudra or any the thing you must remember is that name you got to be particular about that name so bhava and triambaka for the two goals of mundane life and spiritual life okay om bhavaya namah om bhavaya namah om bhavaya namah this is for sansara om namah trambakaya hom jungsa actually there is a line missing out here in this mantra it should read om namah shivaya trambakaya hom jungsa so please note there is something missing in this mantra it is om namah shivaya please put shivaya over there trambakaya hom jungsa now we will do some charts albert einstein venus exalted wow 10th house wow varesha venus exalted 10th house plus lagna lord that is super that is really super and in which nakshatra is venus venus is in revati nakshatra which is so i got the connection between lagna lord 
between the Lagna Lord Mercury and the Varesha Venus through the Nakshatra Revati. I need a connection between Varesha and Lagna Lord. If I find the Naks if I find a connection between the Varesha that is in here Venus and the Lagna Lord Mercury through nakshatras. I mean Venus can be in a nakshatra of Mercury or Mercury can be in a nakshatra of Venus. Either way, they have a nakshatra connection. If the nakshatra connection is there, then the mind is charged by Agni. What a mind. And this is empowered further by the Sandvik Bala. You can see all that. He was very successful. Research, yes. Scientific temperament. He's the greatest scientist. Interested in many Shastra, all kinds of studies. And highly dutiful. I don't know about that. I'm not commenting on that. Enemies eliminated. He created the atom bomb. Come on. Enemies will be totally eliminated with that. Okay. Now this is my dear student, Vistil Larson. With permission, I will proceed. His Varesha is also Venus and it is in the second house. It is having a Parivartana with Jupiter. You see that? In Kala Amrita Yoga, we have seen a Kala Amrita Yoga previously. So here we are seeing another Kala Amrita Yoga. Rahu is there. After Rahu, all the planets are there. And that is Kala Amrita. And Jupiter is in Parivartana with Venus. Wow. So he visited Kakatpur Oracle for Mantra. Kakatpur is a place in Orissa where the Mangala temple is there and that is where the Achyuta Gadi is there. Okay. Our tradition stems from the Mangala of Achyuta, Kakatpur. Konarka is our Devata. And received a 14 syllable. See, Venus is in second house. So Achyuta, the oracle, gave him a 14 syllable Trayambaka mantra. He got the mantra Om Namah Shivaya Trayambakaya Hong Jungsa. That is exactly 14 syllable. So the idea here are the rules of the mantra. Now I have told you about the devatas and I have given you simple mantras. But the number of syllables of a good mantra should arrive at the Varesha. Here Varesha is Venus. So the mantra must arrive at the Varesha. The mantra must come over here. Here Venus is in second house. So go around 12, 13, 14. 14 syllable. The name of the Devata must be very specifically used and cannot be replaced by another name. You have to use one of the two names. Either the Sansarik name or the Sannyasa. What we call the spiritual. I will not use the word Sannyasa because this is Agni. Sannyasa really comes from Vayu. Okay. The name. Then all mantra must be initiated with Omkar. You have to start the mantra with Omkara. That cannot be compromised. These are rules that cannot be compromised. Now, mantra must be recited in the evening for wealth, work. No, no, no. This is reversed. Is it? Yes, it is reversed. Please correct it. Mantra must be recited in the morning for wealth and work and in the evening for health and longevity. Okay? Or is it vice versa? I'm confusing myself when I go in a hurry. Now Saturday, there are some points written out here. Learned in various Shastra when he's strong, never troubles others. Honorable, opulent, dear to men. Hey, somebody told me that birth on Saturday was bad. But here I'm getting all very good results. Learned, all Shastra means scientific. Never troubles others. Never troubles others. Very honorable. What, what they will say, they will do. Honor. Why? Saturn rules the 10th house of natural zodiac. No? Opulent, wealthy, 11th house of the natural zodiac. Dear to men. Very dear to men. Popular. Gives a lot of popularity. If Varesha is with Shani. So that means if Agni is with Shani, you are born on Saturday, and Shani is very strong, you have the power to remove the sorrow of other people. And how do you do that? With Ugra. 
the Pratyadi Devata is ugr, fierce, furious, radical, powerful, violent, impetuous, like the wind, like the like a tornado. You can remove the sorrows and throw them away. You can remove the problems and tear it away. You can be high-minded, noble, but ferocious for sure. Om Ugraya Nama. Om Ugraya Nama. Om Ugraya Nama. If it is weak, then there is no need to even doubt that you will be penniless. All vices, all the shadripos, people will blame you for everything. You will be absolutely shabbily dressed. Your clothes will never be ironed. And you will be very, very valorous. I, I will do this. I will show you I can do that. You know, I, I'll, I will become president. You know, God knows what you will become. Especially after alcohol, you can see these people talking this valorous talk. Okay. Here we have a chart of Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany. She was born on a Saturday and Saturn is exalted. And Saturn is also Shubhapati, Lord of the Moon sign, which means that she is going to be very, very popular. Unlike others, Saturn is in the 12th house, but Saturn is not good in a Kendra. Saturn in Dustana is good. You see, when it comes to Shani, only Shani, the that story is slightly different, particularly 12th house is fabulous. But again, remember my words, I don't like Malefic in the 12th house. Can I trust you? Well, well, well. Read about her thing. Now, learned in Shastra, she has a doctorate in quantum chemistry. Of course she is learned. Never troubles others. I don't know how much I will agree with this. Openly propagated Marxism as secretary for agitation and propaganda. Her job was to agitate. That is to trouble others, right? When you're agitating, you're troubling everybody. Honorable, yes, she was chancellor from Venus, Venus. Opulent, dear man. I used Ashtotari Dasha out here. Okay, I think I have done. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you next Sunday.